On Linux, there are a lot of different ways of getting information about your computer. You can use HTOP or TOP, you can use BTOP, you can use BPYTOP. You can get information using things like LM sensors. There are just any number of ways to get all sorts of information about every piece of your hardware. But most of them tend to be very, very text centric. They are going to throw a lot of numbers at you. And even if they do have some graphs or whatever, they're usually either not that great or they're in the terminal, right? And a lot of people don't care for the terminal. Now there are many different GUI options for getting system information. So you can use the system monitor for GNOME or KDE or whatever, and you can get a lot of that information, but they're either lacking in some information or they're not all that good looking. So what I want to do today is talk about an application called Mission Control. Now Mission Control is an application that does a lot of stuff that other system monitor applications do. It gives you the information on your system. It does a good job at that but it does so in a very nice package. So today we'll take a look at Mission Control. Before we jump in, if you would leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at Mission Control. So this here is what it looks like. Now, I will just be 100% upfront about this. I'm using a window manager. I'm not using a desktop environment. So if you're using GNOME, this will probably look even better because you're going to have a system that kind of fits the Adweta slash libadweta or whatever, you know, theming that goes on there, right? I don't really have that, but it still looks even nice here inside of Qtile. So let's talk a little bit about what it gives you. So on the first pane, you have access to a graph of all the information on your system. So you can get information on your CPU, your memory, all of your connected and mounted disks, all of your network ports, including virtual ports. So if you are using a virtual machine, it'll give you information on your virtual machine network as well. And it also gives you information about your GPU. Now, one of the things I like about Mission Control so much is that it has all of this stuff. A lot of the system monitor applications always, they give you CPU and they give you memory and they'll probably give you network. That's basically it, right? So if you, let's just give you an example. If we take a look at BTOP here, you have access to the memory, the disks, the network, and the CPU and the memory. That's basically it. So you actually have the, the processes, what I mean is the memory, the processes, the CPU, the disks, and the, and the network, right? It doesn't give you access to your GPU. It doesn't give you access to any virtual networks. And it doesn't do a fantastic job of splitting out the disks in terms of like graphing the usage of them, right? It gives you a sense of where you are in terms of usage in terms of how much you know gigabytes you're using on that disk and it does give throughput on the disk that you're using but there it's not in graph form right it's just little numbers here that kind of flap flash up as the disk is used on mission control you can see a full-on graphic representation of your disk usage along with all the information you'd want so active time read write speeds uh, average response times, capacity, things like that. The one thing that it doesn't give you is how much you're actually using of that particular drive. So uh, that's the one piece of information that's lacking here uh, that BTOP and other system monitors do give you. So it does lack some information, but I like the fact that this gives you write speeds. I like the fact that it gives you the average response time and the capacity and all that stuff. And it gives it to you for every drive that you have mounted. In terms of memory, it gives you in use, the available, the committed, the cached, the swap that's available and things like that. In terms of CPU, it gives you everything that you'd expect it to have. So utilization, the speed that it's currently running at, the number of processes that you're running, the number of threads, the uptime for your CPU, the base speed, the sockets and all that stuff, right? Everything you'd want to know about your CPU is right there along with a very colorful graph that represents the usage as it goes along the timeline, right? In terms of GPU, we also have utilization, clock speed, power draw, which is ver very important for like, especially if you're w very close to the PSU capacity on your computer, you can kind of keep an eye on what your GPU is drawing. So that's really nice. The memory usage, the memory speed, the temperature of your GPU. So all of this information in a very nice package. And that's even just kind of like half of what this does. If all this did was just show you some nice graphs and give you this information, that'd be enough for me, to be honest with you. But it also has a processes list. So you can go up here to apps 
and it will show you all of your running apps and processes. Now, I will say that it does not like DistroBox all that much, to tell you the truth. So I have, if I go to a scratch pad here and do DistroBox list, I, you can see that I only have one DistroBox actually up and running, which is my Arch DistroBox. All the rest of them are shut down, and yet, for whatever reason, you can see that it's actually showing the DistroBox of Gen 2, Arch, Fedora, Ubuntu LTS, even though none of those are running. The only one that's running is Arch. So why, why that keeps coming up in the memory and CPU usage, I'm not actually sure. They shouldn't be because they're not running. So I'm not sure if that's a DistroBox issue or a, um, a mission control issue. So just kind of keep that in mind. Everything else, though, is all listed here. You can sort by CPU uh, up and down. You can sort by memory up and down you can sort by disk up and down and you can sort by PID up and down right you can also if you wanted to find something that you wanted to kill you can just right click and click stop or for stop application and that would kill the process now it doesn't give you the range of SIGINTs that say HTOP does so if we go back here and do HTOP we can actually see also there's the problem with Deckmaster right there <laughs> it uses a lot of CPU and I'm not sure why I always end up having to kill it, so we'll actually do that now. So I hit F9, right? And then you can see the HTOP actually gives you a whole bunch of sig SIGINTs for you to use. Whereas Mission Center really doesn't. So what's even more interesting is that it doesn't show Deckmaster here inside of the app section. So I'm assuming that we're going to find Deckmaster uh, down here somewhere and probably in the processes somewhere. Let's see here. Actually, what we should be able to do is just sort by that. So OBS is taking up most of the CPU. What's interesting is the sort functionality here is a little wonky. Oh, it does it by, oh, there it is right there. Deck master right there, force stop application, and uh, goodbye. So I really, really like this layout. It gives you the apps and processes, and I find this section here to be just super useful and very aesthetically pleasing, right? It gives you a lot of information in a very pretty package. and I don't know what more you could ask for, to be honest with you. Now, I will also say this. Their pace of development is pretty impressive. Just a couple months ago, this came out, and they're already on the third version of it, maybe even more than that now. And they continue to improve it and add features. So in this most recent release, we actually got the ability to interact with this list. So before, you couldn't interact with the apps and the processes. You couldn't kill them. You couldn't sort them, whatever. Now you can. So their pace of development is actually very impressive. So that's another point in its favor. So that's Mission Control. It's actually really, really well done. And I highly enjoy it. I'm not much for GUI applications. Now, you guys know me. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a nerd. Therefore, I have to use the terminal. It's kind of in the job description. So uh, I usually you either use BTOP, which I showed you earlier, or HTOP, one of those two, right? But I do enjoy a good looking application and mission control is that so i'll probably add this to my repertoire of applications and if you want to you can as well it is available via flat hub i'm not sure if it's available via snap or anything like that i just installed the flat pack it was easy as pie so that's it for this video if you have thoughts on mission control you can leave those in the comment section below if you haven't already leave a thumbs up on this video i'd really appreciate it, it really does help the channel you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast i also have a ko-fi page at ko-fi.com slash the linuxcast it's ko-fi slash the linuxcast you can support me there uh, if you're not interested in patreon or youtube Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so very, very much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.